I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. For this overall reaction, I predict that many of you in the audience could figure out for sure the very first step in this reaction, which is a classic Diels Alder reaction. Notice that we have a dye and a dienophile, which can allow us to interact to create a brand new Diels Alder product. In this cycloaddition reaction, what would happen is the electrons would participate in this electrocyclic system to make a fused ring bicyclic system. So the classic product of any Diels Alder reaction is going to be this cyclohexane. But in this case, since we had a triple bond here, there's still another pi bond. So then our esters will be coming off at this direction, and we don't need to necessarily consider the endo rule because of this pi system giving us sp2 hybridized carbons don't result in any sort of designation as to the endo rule for Diels Alder reactions. However, since our diene contained already a ring system, this means that now we've generated this bicyclic fused ring system where we have another six-membered ring that is a part of this ring where some of the carbons are participating in both rings. And this is because we have an oxygen here and then this carbonyl group at this position as well as it is being attached to these two carbons. Now, as I mentioned, I predict that many of you could have figured out this Diels Alder reaction. The next step, however, is likely one that you may have not seen before, but it's actually just a retro Diels Alder process. Retro meaning kind of like in the reverse. However, rather than generating back to our starting materials, what you should notice is that we have the potential to generate a good leaving group. What can happen here is these pi electrons can move to this position, freeing up this carbon to carbon bond by moving these electrons to this location. And in doing so, this is going to make a carbon to oxygen double bond there and a carbon to oxygen double bond here, which should seem familiar to you because that's exactly what CO2 gas is. So then notice what needs to happen is that these electrons just need to come down over here to complete this aromatic benzene ring system. So notice these pi electrons move to being between these two carbons. These electrons came over here to help us generate CO2 as a leaving group gas. And then these electrons between the carbon and oxygen came down to give us our 4n plus 2 pi system, which is known as an aromatic compound. So both generating an aromatic compound as well as generating a gas that if left in an open flask would leave and Le Chatelier's principle would allow us to drive this reaction forward are kind of the driving forces for this type of reaction. And in fact, this is only a two-step mechanism where first you had a Diels Alder reaction following a classic mechanism of that cycloaddition between the diene and the dienophile, and then subsequently a retro Diels Alder process where we're generating CO2 and also forming benzene to give us this substituted benzene system. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. If you have any ideas, drop it as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.